Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for taking a couple minutes to stop in and check out uh, what's been going on over here at Input Mapper. Um, I want to start off by thanking everybody for the donations for the past week uh, to help support Benjamin uh, Nefarious and his uh, driver getting his driver signing certificate. Um, I just sent the payment over about a couple minutes ago, and uh, at the end of it, we raised. Uh, it was $136.74, so um, that's awesome, guys. Uh, I want appreci I appreciate you. I know Benjamin appreciates you. Uh, I sent that over to him just a couple minutes ago. Um, with the time zone difference and all that, he probably won't get it for another f couple hours. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure that will definitely help out with what he's uh, got going on over there and help pay for that certificate uh, so he's not paying for that cost up front anymore. So, um, again... Thanks a lot, guys. Um, we'll probably do that a couple more times uh, after we've reached our goal just to, you know, help him get to his goal. Uh, so keep uh, keep an ear to the ground for that, and I'll let you guys know when we do that, uh, when we decide to do that again. All right. Uh, so, Input Mapper. Um, got a couple things that I've done. Uh, one of them is I started talking about uh, simulating or using keyboard mouse input to simulate controller input and I've made some actually really good progress on that um, I already have a profile set up here um, actually let's find our X input test bring that up and you can see there the right stick is already getting input from my mouse movements there and like I said we did this before in input mapper 2 um, but the one problem input mapper 2 was was it had to trap the mouse on the center of the screen because it was getting its delta from the cursor position itself and not actually from the hardware mouse and that caused the reason why we had to trap the mouse was because if the cursor got to the edge of the screen the cursor stops moving past that point therefore has no delta therefore we couldn't calculate a stick value but now uh, I drag the I'm moving the mouse all the way up to the top and if I keep pushing up, you see the stick core, the stick uh, behaves just like I'm, you know, moving that cursor past that point. So uh, no longer bound by the edge of the, the edges of the screen. Um, there is a small bug that I found that uh, won't impact uh, everybody, but um, apparently uh, a lot of games, uh, when you have a multi-monitor setup, when you play a game the game itself will capture the mouse cursor to one monitor. Um, that's, uh, there, there's ways that I can work with that, but what it means is for a multi-monitor display, um, when it's capturing to one monitor, um, it doesn't detect when it gets to the edge of that one monitor. Um, the code that I've written only detects when it gets to the edge of your entire uh, desktop workspace. So I got to write a workaround for when the mouse is in a captured state to use a little bit different logic. Um, not, not the end of the world. I'm sure I could work around that and get something working with that. Um, but it's just, just a little bump in the road for right now. Um, everything else uh, is mapped here. I got my, uh, my clicks or my, uh, uh, my triggers there. Um, WASD is the left stick. Uh, I got a couple other things mapped in there just uh, based on um, just based on common like first person shooter keyboard layouts. I tried to map them to what uh, their closest equivalent would be um, if they were using a uh, if they were using a controller instead of mouse and keyboard. So it'll have you know, a lot of functionality right out the bat, but uh, there's, you know, of course, still the ability to remap the stuff with an input mapper. Um, uh, so you can change that stuff. Um, there will only be a limited number of inputs because I am using kind of like a, a controller template 
um, to name all these keys to, and there's far more keys on a keyboard than there are controller templates, so, or than there are channels on a controller, so. Um, I won't be able to get all the keys on the keyboard, but I'm going to get, you know, all the ones that, you know, are pretty common in first-person per first shooters. Um, the, the one thing about it is, though, uh, it's, it's never going to be as good as using a mouse and keyboard. Um, you're not going to be able to use this with a controller game and say, oh, I got the same position, I got the same precision as if I was using, you know, an actual mouse and keyboard. There, there's... There's no way to avoid the, a little bit of lag and a little bit of momentum that you're going to get um, when you do this because it's, I mean, you're running it through software. Um, the only way to avoid that is if there was some sort of a hardware solution that you're plugging your keyboard and mouse into, um, like some of these sticks that you find where you plug your keyboard and mouse into it and you can plug that into an Xbox. The, using a hardware solution like that is the only real way you can avoid some sort of latency, so... Um, this will work for, you know, some games, um, competitive first person shooters, it's not going to be the best and there's just no way around that. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind going in. Um, let's see, other than that, uh, like I said, I have a lot of stuff going on, so I wasn't able to make a huge amount of progress. Um, but I was able to get, like I said, this controller, uh, keyboard and mouse controller, uh, to work, so... Um, so that's about it guys uh, and again I want to thank everybody for the donations to Benjamin uh, I'm sure he'll appreciate that so uh, until next week I'll see you guys oh before I go I want to do, do want to mention one thing uh, the website has a new support section um, so from now on uh, I know I just started getting everybody funneled into the forums to put their support uh, requests in there but now I need to get everybody to move again um, everything uh, with all the input mapper versions are now going to uh, the support tab that you see here now and you can request tickets and as well as you know uh, there's a couple other common things the FAQ and there they will be a knowledge base which will have some videos um, that are uh, like tutorials and stuff like that so um, yeah, if you guys could just use this from now on and, uh, remember to upload your logs, um, when you can, um, those, there's even directions in here, uh, for the, as far as to where you get those logs from, uh, for the different versions of Input Mapper. So make sure you include those. It's hard for me to guess as to what problems can be unless I get logs, um, and, if you're using Input Mapper 1.7, uh, you generate a debug file. This is a little bit, this is named a little bit different in this version that I have on my desktop here. Um, and the other one, I think it's Submit Bug Report, something like that. Um, but you need to make sure that you save this file and include it in its entirety uh, because it has a lot of uh, useful information for me. Uh, like all the stuff that I would typically ask, it would have, you know, your Windows version, your Input Mapper version, uh, a bunch of different driver versions and all that stuff. Uh, so uh, make sure you include this. Uh, you save it to a file. And then there's even a shortcut button now where it says open a new support ticket. If you click that, it'll automatically take you here and it'll automatically fill in your Input Mapper version and your Windows version with the correct information. Um, but it doesn't automatically upload the file, so you still have to do that. Um, but, yeah, alright. That's it. Everybody have a good one. I'll see you next week.